this video is um, to show you how to de-seasonalize and um, we're going to do that, uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, on this data here we've got monthly data, again same data as our whole winter's example uh, from 2006 August all the way down here to um, actually our data really ends in 2013 March. Okay, so this is slightly different than the example we did in lecture because we are uh, working with monthly data instead of quarterly data. So we're going to de-seasonalize a uh, handful of columns we need to make then. The CMA it's called and then we're going to make a ratio column, um, an unadjusted factor uh, column, um, an adjusted factor column, and then once we've got those guys we can use them to uh, make a column with our de-seasonalized data. Okay, and um, let's call these the sales. So these are the de-seasonalized sales, if you will. Okay. Now, uh, first column to work with is the centered moving average, it's called. What we need to do, though, is we need to take half of the year and put stars for that first half of the year. So if we have monthly data, put stars for the first six months of the year. It doesn't matter where you start in the year either. So notice this the guy starts in August, that's okay. So we're going to blank out half the year and we're going to start um, on the seventh month for monthly data. And we're going to take an average, an average, okay, of the first 12 months here, so August to July, comma, an average of the next 12 months starting in September and going one further down. So make sure you've grabbed a year's worth of data for each, close the brackets, okay, and you can do that the whole way down now, so you just click that the whole way down and just quickly again just to see, it's an average of the first 12 months here with the next 12 months and they're centered around this February. That's why we need to start six months down as well or seven really skip the first six so that we can get this centered average centered around this seventh month. Okay, copy that the whole way down but I'm going to go grab these stars here. Going down to the bottom, there's six of them down here that do not belong. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to blank those guys out. Notice there's a little triangle up there as well. It's got a little warning that it's run out of data. So those deserve stars. And actually, let's give these stars. There's no data for these last months here. So those definitely don't get centered moving averages. And where there is data, these six months also uh, we can't get a centered moving average for. Okay, now back to the top here. It's making this look pretty, putting the stars on the right there. Uh, next thing we do is the ratio. So again, let's do that. Start in the seventh month. And what we have is a ratio of our actual data to our centered moving average. Our centered moving average is the uh, value of a typical month in the year centered around this February date. So February, as you notice, is lower than the typical month. So its ratio is less than one. So it's telling us right now that February is about 88% or 87.8% of the typical month sales. So we're down or lower in February. Let's grab those stars as well because this formula probably copied too far down. Okay, and here we go. Okay, make those all stars just in case. Okay, and back up. Okay, now we've got all of our ratios. We've got all of our centered moving averages. The next thing we need to do is start um, getting our unadjusted factors, which are averages of this, the ratios for the same time period each year. So let's say if I'm doing monthly data, first um, uh, month I'm working with is February, 
So go and um, you're going to average out each of the uh, ratios for the Februarys. I'm just going to highlight them so they're easier to pick out later. You don't actually have to do that, uh, but it does make our life easier. After you get the first one here, just for February, you can just copy that down for the first 12 months and then you're fine. Okay. And do we have any more Februarys? No, we don't. Notice our data ends in September. We have to be aware of that as well. So actually, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, this guy's gonna be a little interesting. Be careful at the end. For the last few months, we're gonna have to modify our formula because we'll be out of data. Okay, so back to here. This guy is going to be the average of all of the ratios for February. So E8, E20, going down here. Comma, and then E32, comma, E44, comma, E56, comma, page down, E68, and that is all of them. Okay. Good. And now, copy that formula down all the way through here until September, I believe. I'm just going to double check here. There we go. September here is the last month in 2012 where we have ratio. So that's where we're going to have to stop that formula. And then for the next few months, it's going to be slightly less data that we're averaging. Okay, so notice this guy goes down to, for September here, it goes to our last data point. Oh, did something wrong there. Okay, average. Oop. Okay, so I'm going to copy that formula, paste it down, but I'm going to get rid of the last value. E76 doesn't exist. So take that guy out. Good. And now... Copy that down, good. I'm just gonna highlight February here, just kinda for visual help. I'm gonna copy those factors now, and now I'm ready to right click and paste to special them down. Okay. Now, copy those guys and paste them down each year after that. Okay. The unadjusted factors repeat. It's the same pattern every year after that. So you can even keep going like that. Good. And let's see on the top here too, we have August through to January. So go grab these guys. Copy them, and up here, paste special them. There we go. Just double check you got everything right. So those are our unadjusted factors. Now, um, last thing we need to do is adjust them, it's called. So we want the sum of our adjusted factors, in this case, to sum up to 12 because we have 12 periods in the year. What we're going to check now is what they actually sum up to. So sum of, you can grab any span of a year. So August through to July is one full year. Um, doesn't matter where you start in the year, okay, as long as you go a full year. So sum of August of 2006 to July 2006 gives us 12.01 so not quite 12 so we need to fix that by doing the following you do equals um, the unadjusted factor times by the 12 which is what you want and divided by the 12.01 which is what you have and that will adjust and make your factors add up to 12 now since I've locked the J2 and the K2 here I can just double click 
copy that the whole way down. Let's double check here, everything looks okay. And just take a quick look after. Make sure that uh, you have the same factors occurring every year. So February now uh, is 0.99942 and that repeats every year, that's good. Okay, very last step here to de-seasonalize. That's the whole reason you do all these messy complications here, or sorry, calculations. Um, to de-seasonalize, you take your sales and divide it by what we went through all the work to do, which was to get these adjusted factors. What this is gonna do, it's gonna strip off the seasonal ups and downs in the data set. So just divide by your adjusted factor. So take your actual original, divide by adjusted factor, and you can just copy that the whole way down now. And now we have our deseasonalized data. Now just beware at the bottom here, some of them we didn't know these guys. Okay, so we're just gonna get those guys out of there. And here we go. We now have deseasonalized sales. Um, okay, so it's these sales just without the seasonal ups and downs. Why do we do that? There's a bunch of different re reasons. If you wanted to run a regression on these sales, perhaps, uh, you would need them to be roughly linear if they were just trending upwards. Um, or let's say if you wanted to pull off the seasonality so you could see what else is happening in the data set, um, you might want to deseasonalize. And so that's how you do it. Get your centered moving average, get the ratios of those averages to the original sales, uh, get your unadjusted factors by averaging out each of the ratios within the same time period each year, and then do this fancy adjusting by taking and uh, taking your unadjusted factor, multiplying by the um, number of time periods in the year and dividing by the sum of the unadjusted factors. And then finally to deseasonalize again, you take your original data and divide by your adjusted factor that you just got. Okay, and that's it for deseasonalizing.